my screen? Yes. So our topic for today is basic graph algorithms. It's small introduction to world of graphs. And uh, today I'm going to tell you some words about uh, graph theory, what is graph, how to represent graphs using different structures, their advantages and disadvantages. And uh, for the final, uh, final, I will show basic traversal algorithms of graph and uh, some issues that they can solve. Uh, so why we even need th those graphs? Graphs are very important because they can be used to represent almost any problem, uh, which makes them so interesting. Uh, in mathematics and more specifically in graph theory, a uh, graph is a structure amounting to a set of objects in uh, which some pairs of the objects are in some sense related. In simple words, a graph is network that consists from uh, some nodes and edges that connect them. A uh, graph could be used in many different areas, actually. Uh, the most obvious, I think, it's representation of social network where each user is represented as a node. And all their activities, suggestion, and friend list are represented as an edges between the nodes. Um, a representation of those these graphs uh, enables us to answer how many friends has person and how many mutual friends has, for example, person A and person B. Um, graph theory is the study of graphs, which are mathematical structure used to model pairwise relations between objects. Um, also, there are many types of graphs. Let's check the most common types. Uh, so, the first one is an uh, undirected graph. It's a graph in which edges have no orientation. It means that uh, the HAB is identical to the HBA. The next one is uh, in contrast to undirected graphs. Uh, there are also directed graph. <laughs> a directed graph is a graph in which edges have orientation. So the edge AB is the edge from node A to node B. Uh, for example, in the following graph, nodes could be cities and uh, edges representing roads. Roads could be one way and two way. For example, from C to F, we have like two way road. Um, the next one is weighted graph. In weighted graph, each edge has some value. It could be cost, distance, etc. Usually edges with weighted with weight denotes as triplet. Uh, a, B, and value, where A is start of the graph, B is finish, uh, sorry, of the edge, and B is finish of the edge. And value its weight of the edge. Back to the map. Uh, weight of the edge could be uh, represented uh, represent distance from one city to another. Uh, also, weighted graphs could be directed and undirected as well. The next one is a tree. A tree is an undirected graph with no cycles. Equivalently, it's connected graph with n nodes and n minus one edges. Tree also could be directed and undirected. And couple of trees uh, called forest. Also about cycles. A uh, cycle is a path that starts from one point and ends in that point. For example, in this graph, we have cycle from uh, node A, we go to node C, to node B, and then we return to node A. Uh, so now we know some types of uh, graph, and now we want, ah, I have another one, sorry. Uh, a complete graph, uh, complete graph, it's undirected graph that has unique edge between every pair of nodes. A complete graph is, and nodes is denoted as the graph KN. Um, for KN graph, it consists of n nodes and n multiplied by n minus minus one divided by two edges. So uh, that's all basic types of graphs. 
they could be combined uh, between each other. And there are some uh, other types, but it uh, mostly they just combined from uh, more common types. Uh, now let's check some ways to represent graph using different structures. There are three types of representing agency metrics, agency list, and edge list. Uh, first type, it's agency metrics. An agency metrics is the simplest way to represent the graph. The idea is that the cell IJ represents the edge weight of going from node I to node J. Uh, here we can see an undirected graph and agency metrics that represent him. As it's undirected graph, edges have uh, like two uh, directions. For example, if we have edge from A to B, we have the same edge from B to A, as we can see on the uh, matrix from A to B 15 and from B to A also 15. Uh, agency matrix for undirected graph is symmetrical to main diagonal. As we can see, we have undirected graph and it's symmetrical. Uh, what advantages of agency metrics? It's space efficient for representing graphs with a lot of edges. Uh, in that case, agency metrics will not contain any unnecessary information. It will be filled with uh, numbers. For example, in this graph, we have a lot of zeros that we will skip because it means that uh, there is no edge if zero uh, in a cell. Uh, edge weight lookup is constant as it's simple matrix access to the edges is really fast and it's simple to implement because we don't need to do any additional work. Uh, disadvantage is that it require uh, n squared space where n is a uh, number of nodes in the graph. So no matter how many edges graph has, it always requires n squared space. Uh, from this, we have another pro problem. Uh, iterating over all edges takes n squared space uh, because we have like metrics and we should go through all. Also, it's not efficient for space graphs. Uh, if we have three with n nodes, we will have only n minus one edge and other parts of matrix will be filled with zeros that we skip. But we still need to uh, go through the matrix, as I say. And yeah, it's pretty bad for trees. Uh, agency list. Uh, an agency list is a way to represent graph as a map from nodes to lists of edges. Here we see uh, node A and edges that came out from it. Uh, it's edge to C, to B, and to E. And we put it for uh, to the map where we have key A and uh, first one is a uh, uh, destination node and the uh, next value it's a uh, weight of graph uh, of edge sorry uh, what advantages of agency list uh, it's space efficient for representing graphs with small quantity of edges. If we have sparse graphs, uh, it's very good variant to store information in agency list because it will contain only uh, existing edges. Uh, iterating over all edges is efficient because uh, we'll have only existing edges. Uh, disadvantages of agency list uh, less space efficient for near complete graphs because uh, unlike in uh, agency metrics, we store destination node uh, and in worst case, it will use more than n squared space because we have 
n nodes. Every node has n minus one edge from it. And information about one edge consists from uh, two elements, where the first uh, destination and the next one is the uh, um, weight of the edge. And edge weight lookup uh, is M, because in the worst case, we will have, for example, a star, where in the center we have node that connected to all the other star, uh, other nodes, and to go through, uh, to find desired uh, edge, we, in worst case, go through M edges. Uh, slightly more, more complex graph representation. Uh, it's a little bit harder to implement this structure, but not so hard. Uh, it easily could be done by using map where key is not, uh, node from which edges start and value its list of pairs where first element is destination node and second element its value. Edges list. Uh, an edge list is a way to represent graph simply as an ordinal list of edges. Assume the notation for any triplet i, j, k means uh, that the cost from node i to node j is k. And also we, not, uh, we don't uh, repeat edges, but in reverse order. So we just need, uh, for example, a, b and don't need uh, B H B A H, but we need somehow uh, in uh, in a program uh, handle that we have undirected or directed graph. Uh, advantages of edge list: it's space efficient for representing sparse graphs because it contains only edges. And iterating over all edges is efficient because we will iterate only through edges as in a agency list. And it's very simple structure. Uh, disadvantages, it's less space efficient for near complete graphs. Uh, the same problem as in a agency list. Age weight lookup is M uh, because we need to iterate through all edges to find uh desire edge uh also edge list uh doesn't fit to all algorithms uh in graph theory but it's perfect for uh for example finding uh minimum spanning tree it's very good so now we know how to represent our graphs in like our program and now we can uh, find uh, some, we can traverse those graphs. And the first uh, method is depth first search. The depth first search is the most fundamental search algorithm that used to explore nodes and edges of graph. It runs with the time complexity n plus m uh, DFS often used as a building block in other algorithms. By itself, uh, it, all, it isn't all that useful, but it could be modified to perform other tasks, such as, uh, for example, count components, like uh, disconnected parts of graph, uh, determine connectivity, or find bridges or articulation points. In that case, DFS really works. Uh, also speaking about bridge, it's any edge in graph uh, whose removal divides graph to two smaller graphs. Uh, bridges are very important in graph theory because they often hint at weak points and bottlenecks. Uh, I want to show bridge. Uh, for example, we have bridge here from A to E. And if we remove this uh, edge, we will have two separated uh, graphs. Uh, ADFS plunges depths first into graph without regard for which edge it takes next until it cannot go any farther, at which point it back to the previous node 
and continuous. Uh, so now we trying to simulate how works depth for search. We are going to run um, DFS from node zero. So we starting at node zero and picking uh, the first edge to uh, the first edge. It it's one edge uh, to node six. We pick in it, and now we uh, add node six. Once we add six, we pick an edge outwards from it, and it will be edge to the node two. Again, from node two, we pick in another edge. It will be to node one. From node one, we pick edge to node seven. And from seven, we pick edge to node two. But we already visited node two. And we don't need to revisit already visited nodes. So we just backtrack to node seven. After it, we, have, we still have one edge to node six. Uh, but node six is already visited two. So we backtrack to seven. Uh, from the seven, we don't have any edges, uh, any available edges. So we back to uh, node one. One as well doesn't have any available edges. We back to two and then to six. Uh, from the six node, uh, we have, uh, we still have one uh, available edge. It's to Node five, we go to the five, then to three, uh, then four and five. We already visited five, so we back to four, then back to three. And uh, uh, now we are going to node eight. Node eight doesn't have any available edges and we back to three. Uh, three as well doesn't have anything uh available edges any available edges we back to five back to six and back to zero so we just run dfs and it's runs through all uh nodes and now it's finished uh now i want you to show like my implementation of uh dfs uh i created class graph which uh, have vector of visited uh, nodes uh, agency metrics I do it through agency metrics uh, we just uh, construct it by uh, count of nodes number of nodes uh, initializing visited vector and uh, agency metrics for our graph Adding edge is pretty simple because we just need to put uh, one in the cell uh, of connected edges. For example, if we have connected uh, zero and six, we need to put one in cell zero six. And as it's undirected graph, we uh, should duplicate it for uh, destination node I put uh, one because it's only undirected unweighted graph so we mark that uh, there is connectivity between uh, nodes by one and it's DFS depth for sorts e search its recursive method um, so when we go to the uh, when we run the, this method, we run it from uh, some certain point, some certain node, and we um, mark it like visited because we already need, and then we uh, trying to find another node that currently unvisited, and we can uh, go to it and run DFS again. Uh, so it's main. I'm just creating a graph and adding all edges from the example. 
Uh, let's start it. And looks like I have something disconnected there. Ah, uh, I'll use uh, a with agency list because I am playing with this algorithm a little bit. Maybe I have something messed out. Um, oh, it's non recursive. Sorry. Uh, the same, uh, the same algorithm that previous we have, but only with the agency list. Uh, we add uh, a little bit in a different way uh, edges to it. Uh, I have only map where key is int and the uh, value is list of int because it's undirected graph and we don't need weight. We uh, can just add destination points. Um, so let's start this, this one. And we have a uh, path of traversing algorithm. So we go from zero to six, then to two, then one, then seven. And after it, we backtrack to six. Then we go to five, three, four, and back again to three. And then we reach eight node. Uh, also, I have non-recursive method. I more like non-recursive because when we will have a very big graph, it could crash because of stack overflow. Um, everything is similar, but we just, uh, I just uh, a little bit changed uh, DFS method. So as in a previous, we check uh, start node like uh, as visited and push it to the stack. Uh, so we will, uh, store information in a stack. Uh, we mark current node as start, and then we are trying to find uh, unvisited node. Here, we, uh, if we find uh, first node, we just break from this four. And uh, if we doesn't find anything, we are back to the previous node. Uh, but if we find something, we just print out uh, that node and uh, add, in, add, add it to, to the top of the stack. And we continue this uh, before we um, return to the, um, before we empty the stack. Because every time when we can't find uh, any edge, we will pop from the stack value and it will and it works like previous one so back to presentation um depth first search uh, is good for finding number of disconnected graphs as i said we can easily find it by running dfs from every unvisited node um, i have also example for it uh, all we need to do uh, is to add a method that will uh, rerun uh, DFS for every unvisited node. So we just run four uh, from zero to n nodes and looking if a node is already visit is not visited, we uh, increase the uh, number of uh, uh, disconnected graphs and uh, again run DFS. So for example, I have a graph from the our example. 
uh, we will have we have only one uh, disconnected graph. Actually, it's one graph, and let's uh, remove some bridges from it. Uh, we can see that we ca we have bridge from uh, node five to node six. We will remove that edge. And start again it. And now we have two, two disconnected graphs. Uh, so now we're going to breadth first search. Uh, the breadth first search is another fundamental search algorithm that used to explore nodes and edges of graph. It runs with the time complexity n plus m. Um, BFS often used as a building block as well as a DFS. Uh, the breast first search algorithm is particularly useful uh, in for one sync. Uh, it's good at finding the shortest pass on an uh, on unweighted graph. Um, a BFS starts at some arbitrary node at graph uh, and explores their neighbor nodes first before moving to the next level uh, neighbors. So here it is, we have, uh, again, our graph. We start BFS from node zero uh, and uh, looking for all neighbors of zero. It only, uh, it's only node six. From six, we're uh, trying to find all neighbors for that node. It's node two, seven, and five, five. And again, we go to another level of neighbors. It's one, four, three. And the last one is eight. Uh, in uh, actually, uh, BFS works a little bit uh, in different way. Um, and let's look at it a bit more uh, they a bit more precisely accurate. Uh, actually, it's a queue that uh, in which we uh, find another neighbor. For example, we have uh, node zero, and we search all uh, neighbors. It will be only node six. We add six to the queue. Now we go to the six in queue uh, and again search all uh, neighbors of six it will be two five and seven so we add them to the queue and now we go to the another uh, element in queue just the queue uh, the next one is two the neighbor for two that uh, unvisited is one so we add one to the queue. Uh, now we're going to the node five. The neighbors for five, it's true and four, three and four. We're adding them to queue. Uh, the next one is seven. Seven doesn't have any unvisited uh, neighbors. So we just dequeue it. Uh, one as well doesn't have anything new. From node three, we can see that we have uh, unvisited node eight and we add it to Q going to four. Four doesn't have any uh, unvisited nodes and eight also. Uh, also, I have a small demo for breads first. Here is my implementation of uh, Brett's first search. Uh, we have, as in previous uh, method, vector of uh, visited and unvisited nodes. Uh, Q actually, that uh, helps us to go to next layer. Uh, on the start, we 
match that uh, start point is visited already and we push it to the queue and um, we trying to find all neighbors if we find neighbors we uh, push them to the queue and then we go to to the next element in the queue and here we have a uh, traverse of the ah oh, sorry i deleted one edge accidentally from it uh, and here is how uh pass that we will have in that we had in a demonstration in presentation it's go from zero to six from six we have we can see two five one then seven three four and eight and so on um also by modifying bfs we can uh find the shortest pass from one point to another point uh, from one node to another node here is uh, here we have a little bit modified bfs uh, now it uh, receive start point and finish point and it pre uh, and it works like before but to find the way from node uh, S to node F, we need a vector in which we will um, we will uh, show from which point we can uh, go to the particular point. Uh, so now when we add some neighbors, we um, mark uh, from which point we saw them and uh, after bfs we can see if uh, node is visited we just uh, we just print pass from uh, finish node to start node because we already know uh, from which point we from which node we see a, a finish point and that point know from which point uh, it was seen. So let's start it. Um, I'm trying to reach a node seven from node zero. And let's look at the graph. We can do it by uh, zero, seven, uh, zero, six, seven. Oops, I something messed up. Um, oh, it's okay. It's okay. And that's pretty it for today. Uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Anatoly, thank you so much for this presentation. Maybe someone have questions? I have one. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but uh, how did you how do we represent the direction in the adjacency matrix? Uh do you mean directed uh graph in yes. agency matrix? Yes uh yeah, let's back to the agency matrix uh so uh in a row like here we have like start of the node and here it's uh end of the node for example if we'll have directed graph and we have direction from a to b uh we will have only uh hero 15 value and here it will be zero because from B to A it doesn't have uh, uh, edge. Yes. yes, thank you. Uh, 
Any other questions? Uh, can I ask, uh, please, do we have the uh, source code uploaded somewhere so we can study it further? Uh, not yet. I think I'll upload somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Anatoly, uh, I will send you an instruction how to create blog post. And after that, we will send follow up to our participants with recording, presentation, and source code. Is it okay? Yes, great. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, any other questions? Silence. So, uh, yeah, Anatoly.